proper. We have an apology for lateness from Councillor Vandervis. Would someone like to move the apology? Moved Councillor Lofiso, seconded Councillor Hall. Uh, all those in favour? Those against? Uh, that is carried. Uh, confirmation, of, confirmation of the agenda. Uh, I'll move that the committee confirm the agenda with uh, the following enduring alteration uh, that with regard to standing order 2.1, option C be adopted in relation to moving and seconding and speaking to amendments. Do I have a second to second of Councillor Benson Pope? All those in favour? Aye. Those against? That is carried. Uh, declarations of interest. Nobody's joined a political party or looked the wrong way at an AGM uh, in the last 24 hours. Councillor Lofiso. Um, apologies, Mr Chair. I forgot to declare yesterday that I'm um, also the Secretary of the Araiteru Marae Council, and I've sent the information to Lynn. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? No. So with that, I'll move that the committee amend uh, the elected members' interest register and the attendant management plan uh, seconded. Councillor Newell, thank you. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Those against? That's carried. Part A reports. Uh, welcome uh, Dr Griffin to speak to the Otago Museum report to contributing local authorities November to December 2017. We're all yours, sir. Okay, kia ora. Um, I must apologise. This report, I think, came to you at the last meeting. Um, and there's a phasing issue between board meetings that we have at the museum and meetings of this committee. And unfortunately, the papers that I have to present have to go through my board first. So um, we've got a board meeting next week, and that's why this is slightly dated. Um, however, uh, subsequent, I can update you on events subsequent to this period. Um, our Science Centre Tahura opened on the 15th of, 16th of December, and it's been very successful. In fact, um, we've had over 25,000 people through. Um, which is roughly 44% increase on what we had through Discovery World last year. Um, so we're very pleased with that. Um, that's especially pleasing given the amazing weather that we had over the summer period. Um, there's an anti-correlation between visitation to museums and sunny weather. So I'm sure Jennifer, um, my colleague from Toitu, will, will share my hate of the sun um, because that means that attendances at the museum tend to be slightly less. So overall, our museum is running roughly 6 to 8% down on last year's attendance, and we put that down entirely due to the fact that people want to go to the beach rather than come through the museum on a sunny day. Um, that being said, though, Tahura has been a big success. Um, it opened on time, uh, it opened on budget, and it exceeded our expectations in terms of visitation numbers. And we now, once we're through the summer period, with the schools coming back, we're starting to work on the education programs. Um, so from a... Um, a broad perspective, it's been a big success, and you have to remember that um, the income that we generate from Tahura is incredibly important in terms of offsetting the running costs of the museum. Um, we tend to generate roughly 50% of the, the actual cost of operating the museum through um, the, the, the economic, uh, the, sorry, the, the, the income that we generate. So, um, so far it's been good. Tahura is off to a good start, but it's up to us now to work hard to make sure it keeps going. Um, and we were delighted today to host a visiting group from the um, the tourism, um, New Zealand Tourism Board, who I understand are visiting the whole city, but we took a, a group of them through this morning and they seem to be quite excited by it. Um, outside of that, uh, work continues. Um, this year is our 150th birthday. Uh, the museum opened in um, August 1868, so we have a number of um, exhibitions and celebrations around that. Um, we've got a big, ex a big exhibition called EST, which stands for Established, and that will open later in the year, and it's a very exciting exhibition because it's going to have things like the biggest, the smelliest, the sexiest, the, the oldest, the newest, all to do with things that, that come from our collection. So it's going to be a really good celebration of our 150th birthday. Um, looking forward, we're also starting to think about the future of the museum as a whole. Um, we've spent the last four or five years getting the, um, the income generation part of the museum sort of stable, and we've got a really good base. But over the next 10 years, we've basically got about uh, 10 galleries that we need to upgrade and replace. The most recent gallery upgrade that we did was Southern Land, Southern People, and that was in around 2000, 2001. So we've got a big um, set of projects in front of us to make sure that all of those galleries are upgraded. And we're developing a master plan, and there will be some community consultation around that um, just to make sure that we get buy-in and everybody supports the way that the museum's going to go. 
Um, the funding for that is going to be a challenge. Um, I think we'll have to go beyond Dunedin to get the funding for it. And I'd certainly look to the council to help us um, make the right links there so that we can get um, the money we need to make these galleries as good as they, as they can be. Um, it's interesting to compare it. It's compared to um, Te Papa presently going through a similar process and they're spending something like 35 to 37 million dollars replacing all of their galleries and they're doing it over five years. We're probably going to have something of a similar scale, being honest, but we'll probably phase it over 10 years because I think we couldn't possibly do it on that scale with the resources that we've got. Um, collections team are doing well. Um, the education team have had a fantastic start to the year and I'm really looking forward to a busy year at the museum. And once again, we do appreciate the support that we get from the ratepayers of Dunedin, um, because without their support, we couldn't do half the things that we, we do at the museum. And I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Any questions? Councillor Neil. Uh, thank you, Dr. Griffin. Um, just wondering, uh, you mentioned in the report that uh, you're um, looking at doing some filming for the planetarium with NHNZ. What sort of things are you be filming? Is it is it going to be uh, is, the, is that footage going to be saleable overseas yeah. and promote Dunedin? Yeah, um, indeed, we're creating a show, and it's it's got a working title of Zealandia, and you may remember last year there was a, a discover well, it's not really a discovery, but the announcement that there's this continent called Zealandia, which is um, the eighth continent. So we're doing a show around that, and it incorporates some NHNZ stuff, natural history, but it also incorporates geology. It talks about the aurora, so it's a real celebration of this part of the world. And the plan is to put together a decent planetarium show that we can sell around the world and hopefully use as a, a PR tool. And in fact, one of the things I was pitching to the um, Tourism New Zealand people this morning is if they come in with some cash, you know, imagine doing a launch in a big city around the world in a planetarium, we can, we can help support that. Uh, so I think it is something that we can use to promote not just Dunedin, but the whole of New Zealand. And um, it's a unique thing that we can do from Dunedin because very few, well, there aren't anybody else in the country doing this kind of stuff. And partnership with, with people like NHNZ is really important because we can't do animal filming in the way that they can. And they're, they're amazing. Councillor Vendivis. I note in your report that you were well stocked for the Christmas rush. And I'm wondering, uh, as well as Christmas time, do you notice that you get a cruise ship rush as well? And, and does that do sales through the shop give you a good idea of when you're getting these cruise ship people and how many? Yeah, we do. There's a definite correlation. When, when, shoot, when, put my teeth in. when cruise ships are in town, we see an increasing sales both in the shop and also in the, caf in the cafe. Um, we also notice a, a big correlation when the weather is really bad. So, for example, last Sunday we had an event. There were two, I think there were two cruise ships in last Sunday. There's certainly one. And we had an amazingly big day. We had over 2,000 people through the museum on that day, so that's a big thing. And incidentally, I, I should say that um, the um, positive in impact of Tahura has been felt across the board. We had the biggest ever month for our shop in um, December. Um, we took the actual takings, not the profits, but the takings were over $100,000, which for us is astounding. Um, the, we've sold over 1,000 annual passes for Tahura. Um, you may remember that to try and, to try and obviously it, it's a charging venue and we want to try and get locals to get a decent deal. So we introduced a new annual pass ticket which is set at the, uh, it's $60 for adults, um, $40 for children. And we sold over a thousand of those um, which obviously are going to locals. Um, we've had very few complaints about the pricing. There are obviously people who can't afford it and we're trying to work hard particularly with schools, to provide access to Tahura. But it is an ongoing challenge because obviously we need the money to run the museum, but we also want lots of people to come through the door and, and take advantage of this amazing facility. Great. So, so the museum is definitely a cruise ship destination then. Yes. Is there anything that you particularly do to let cruise ship visitors know about the museum, like in advance before they, they Yeah, come? you have to, to really get onto the cruise ship market, you have to kind of plan about two years out, actually at least 18 months and we're trying to sell things to the people on boats who sell things to the people on the boats if you see what I mean there are, there are people who sell tickets to people on the boats and getting into their um, brochures or their packages is very important having said that we're seeing a lot of just casual walk-ups as well I think cruise ship people are getting more sophisticated and they recognize that sometimes the deals they get on board you get a better deal if you walk straight up so we're seeing more of that um, obviously the museum our position isn't optimum within Dunedin in terms of 
getting the cruise ship folks to us because they do tend to get dropped off at the octagon and they, many of them go off on the train. So a lot of them, I, th I think, start off at Toitu and we, we get a relatively lesser proportion. But having said that, we do see a lot of cruise ships folks coming through and they do spend money in the shop and we do appreciate what they bring to the party. And just finally, the marketing of your museum, is it done in concert with Toitu and the Art Gallery? Remember we suggested a while ago, or there was an idea a while ago, that it might be worthwhile looking at having a manager with an overview of the, uh, of the whole package. Is, is that happening, or are you basically still individually um, targeting your, your markets? There are some initiatives that we all take part in, but we have our own marketing team at the museum and we do our own marketing. Um, for, some re you know, for some things that's quite important because obviously I would imagine marketing the planetarium wouldn't necessarily fit with marketing, the, sure. uh, but, but where, where appropriate we do go in and support um, initiatives. So if the city is taking out an advert in a particular brochure or a particular paper, we'll, we'll bring our material in and, and, and pay to be part of that because we see the importance of it. Right. Um, but there, it's kind of, I, I wouldn't want to say we can do everything together but where appropriate, we do work in, in, in a collaboration with the city. Great, and thank you for being a, another successful cruise ship destination. We need plenty of them. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Councillor Gary. Uh, thank you, Mr Chair, and thank you, Dr Griffin, for your report and your update. Um, is there anything special that you do during orientation? That was something I was curious about. Um, yeah, we do. Um, obviously, orientation <coughs> tends to happen on our grounds. Well, not our grounds, sorry. It's the museum, it's the museum <coughs> reserve. It's actually owned by the city. So we do have a number of events, and we offer some um, passes for the, the students to come through. Um, mm. And actually, beyond O Week, because there are, genuinely there are so many things for students to do during O Week, we actually prefer to do things after O Week. And we work um, particularly with a number of the, um, the halls of residence, for example, uh, to offer events for them. They, they have, they're supposed to put on events that aren't necessarily to do with, shall we say, alcohol. And we, we, we arrange events in association with those. But we see the student market as a big thing for the museum. And actually, over the next year or so, we're going to run a number of evening uh, type activities. Uh, we've developed a new music-based planetarium show, for example, uh, which we think will play well with the student market. So um, students are very important to the museum. Lots of them come to the cafe, and we see them in there with their laptops, etc., using the Gigatown high-speed networks, which is quite, quite good. Um, but within O Week itself, there is honestly so, so much busy. stuff going on that, in a, in, in a sense, if we put anything on, we're not sure that many people will come to it. And that's why we tend to work with them later in the, later in the year. Sure. And my second question is, um, how do you cope on the really large days, you know, the cruise ship day that you, Sunday that you described in your cafe? Is that, I think I noticed some upgrading work yeah. that's happening. Can um, you tell us yeah, about it's, um, it's either feast or famine sometimes in the museum. So on the really busiest days, we would put through sometimes 24, 2,500 people. That for us is a big day. Um, and that does really put stresses and strains on the cafe and we have to kind of introduce a queuing system. There are also limitations on the number of people we can have in particular areas. So if we get more than about 400 people, we have to you know, inst instigate a queuing system. Um, but being honest, that's probably no more than 15 or 20 days per year. So we plan for those days rather than, you know, if we expanded the facilities, it wouldn't necessarily be the best use of our money. Um, I mean, obviously, we can always improve, and one of the things we are focusing on now is, is improving the cafe facilities and the entrance facilities at the museum, and um, that's the next project we're going to try and work on. Thank you. As, as one of your 2,000 visitors on Sunday, I can attest to how well managed it was and how there were extraordinary queues as soon as it opened. Um, I have a question around your, and I, I appreciate this is um, not the most recent report you've yes. written, but um, I, note, I note that you have stopped um, including your website traffic. Oh, that's it's probably, that's not a deliberate, that's oh. an accidental omission. That's not deliberate. Okay. Um, so I f forgive me, uh, we'll make sure in the next report you get a full update. Oh no, that's fine. So, I, so. I just, I just I assumed it was, um, was done intentionally and I, and oh, I just no. wondered if you um, had noticed anything I mean, of significance in a marketing sense over the summer as the change of Facebook's algorithm. No, um, we, we, um, we do monitor it on a monthly basis and I've not seen anything out, you know, right. nothing that makes my eyebrow kind of okay. raise yet, but um, I think I'm not sure we would have been affected by that as much as some bigger companies, for example. Um, I don't think our material is being filtered as badly as, as some, uh, but obviously the next report will be helpful in that regard. Yeah. But I'm, I say I do apologise for the omission because it wasn't deliberate, I can assure you. So, thank you. Um, no further questions? Someone like to move the report be noted, moved. Councillor Benson Pope seconded. Councillor Wilson, any discussion? All those in favour? Aye. 
those against, uh, that's carried. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dr Griffin. Uh, item six, are we on? Yes. Uh, item six, Aratoi and City of Literature update. Mr Hawke. And Ms Gunn. Apologies. We're all yours. Uh, kia ora, and uh, thanks for the opportunity to uh, preview the report. Um, there's been a lot happening over the last six months, and um, I've essentially take the report as read, but some of the highlights certainly were the uh, Creative Cities Southern Hui, uh, which attracted over 300 uh, visitors, uh, some locals, uh, some uh, regional people, some overseas visitors to the city, and uh, the four days um, was a sort of a, a wealth of um, creativity, discussion and uh, inspiration from the various speakers. And the fourth day of that being the um, Aratoi community hui, which uh, again uh, was incredibly valuable in getting feedback from the community. Um, in terms of other events um, that have happened over the six months, I might look to Joy to perhaps highlight some in the community and cultural area. Um, sorry about that. Um, so we've obviously been working on the creativity and infrastructure policy and work around that and the Ross Creek work has started and there will be a report going to the executive leadership team with a um, proposed plan for that uh, continued implementation of that policy. Uh, we've obviously been doing some the work around SAMIs and reports are coming to that as well. From the hui, it was interesting to note that um, from the Aratui hui, much of that fit, the same feedback had come through the festivals and events plan consultation, so there was quite a lot of crossover and um, we are preparing the, a report for the March Council meeting and a draft uh, amended festivals and events plan, which is, is taking into account the Aratoi Hui feedback along with that consultation as well. That's just a quick snapshot. Thank you. Uh, any questions of the report? Councillor Gary. Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. Thank you for the report. Um, Mr Hawke, I wanted to first of all congratulate you on the Creative Systems Symposium, which I attended some of. Um, and it was a great occasion for the city. Um, but I had a question around um, item six. Uh, and it follows on from a question I asked yesterday around the um, art and infrastructure, uh, art and creativity and infrastructure projects and priority list here. Um, did you have any further comment about that in terms of where that's up to? Uh, um, the um, Richard Saunders talked about the, the Peninsula Connection as an example and that um, the policies come, going to be implemented sort of, the project's already started, it's obviously had a very long life. Um, but any updates on that particular, or is that you, Joy? Uh, sorry, that is me and there has been a report drafted to go to ELT with the implement implementation plan and the um, prioritised projects laid out. Right. So... I believe that's going so up we shortly. When would we see that? Or will we see that? OK, thank you. Your Worship. Oh, oh, hi. Uh, Joy and Bernie, um, Creative City Southern Hui, um, I understood that we were doing some analysis of the impact of that, not just economic, but including the, any economic impact uh, and a little more fleshing out of some of the other things that came out of it. Is that, whereabouts is that in the pipeline? Yep, uh, through the Chair, that, uh, that piece of work is, uh, is still in progress and um, what we have done is we have sent email uh, questionnaires to all the participants and um, of the data that we've got back, we're in the process of analysing that and so that, that's still a work in progress. Uh, I don't have a, a sort of uh, deadline uh, when that might be, but um, I would expect it to be over the next month or two. Thank you. 
Any further questions? If not, would someone like to move the report be noted? Moved, Councillor Lord. Seconded, Councillor Benson Pope. Is there any discussion? Um, if there's not, I'd like to take this opportunity to um, thank you personally, Bernie, for uh, the work that you have done. Um, this is the last reporting period um, for your role in, in, in leading um, the implementation of, of Aratoi or Tapoti as you have done its development. Um, it wasn't always uh, an easy process, and I'd like to thank you for your um, considered and considerate uh, manner in, in which um, you managed to uh, bring all of those um, parties together and reach what has been uh, a very productive outcome. Um, it's not easy for government to share uh, authority and influence um, in the way that we have attempted to do in the development of, of our strategic framework, but I think that the uh, results uh, speak for themselves and um, it would be very much part of, uh, of your legacy to see that grow and develop over the coming years. So thank you. Thank you. I'll put it. All those in favour? Aye. Those against? That's agreed. Item 7, Community and Culture Non-Financial Activity Report for the quarter ended 31 December 2017. Um, I, I think with this report um, we take it as read by, by Council and uh, happy to answer any questions on this one. So on questions. Councillor Lord. It's only a wee minor one, Bernie, but I'm just used to seeing these things going up and up and up, and I am surprised to see Alveston's drop back 16% in the residents' satisfaction or the visitors' satisfaction. Do you know what might have caused that? Through the Chair, the um, Alveston is um, highly dependent on the uh, external visitor traffic, and uh, when we do a residents' survey, um, typically when we have a high period of visitation by uh, people who are not resident in Dunedin, um, the, the resident component of it is typically uh, fairly small and, uh, and can be easily skewed. So I, I would attribute that to, uh, to that in this situation where we, the peak period for Alveston is really from sort of October through to March uh, when we have the, the cruise ships and, um, and lots of visitation to the city. The quiet period is over the winter. And so the, uh, the residents' uh, opinion around the summer, that summer six months can be a bit misleading. Further questions? Councillor Vandervis. Um, do you have any comment on the dip in events? It, it occurs that we've got a uh, October-December dip um, there when I would have expected events perhaps to be going a bit better. No, um, I was slightly puzzled by that myself. Um, I think we do always have to take into account that when we ask this question, people aren't just thinking about the DCC run events, they do think about festivals and events across the city. Um, but I don't, I don't actually have an answer for that. Have staff considered that perhaps some of the events that we run annually might need refreshing or rethinking, yes, given that have, you've got yes. to keep reinventing yourselves yep. to stay relevant? Yes, definitely. I think that um, we are thinking about how we can be more innovative with our events, and certainly that is in the planning, you know, in our heads to plan for the future, that our events are more diverse, more, th these are council managed events I'm talking about, because we can't manage right. anyone else's, of course, or, inf we, or influence those, so definitely. Are you looking at doing anything a little bit different perhaps for the New Year's Eve event, which has followed a very similar formula for quite a long time now? Yes, we are. Right, actually. thank you. No further questions. Would someone like to move the report be noted? Moved. Councillor Wilson, seconded. Councillor O'Malley, any discussion? I'll put it. All those in favour? Aye. Those against? That's carried. Thank you. Uh, item 8, report on 2017 place-based review. Um, uh, background of a sort to a discussion we had in our budget meetings in December. Um, I'd like to remind our councillors that the paper we are discussing uh, is in the public agenda um, and we're not discussing that was that was that which was provided to you uh, in, uh, in confidence uh, for the protection of the identity of people who have contributed to that work. So 
Um, if you could keep your comments at a higher level as per the covering report, that would be helpful. Uh, any opening comments, Ms Gunn? No, I'll just take it as read. Okay, thank you. Questions? No? I have one, um, and it's around, I guess, the process from here. Um, depending on which approach we decide to take um, the development of any new approach to supporting place-based community groups or community development um, could be a fairly significant piece of work um, if we're looking at co-designing um, approaches with our community or, or what have you. Um, there's a comment in the report that says that, that work, the, the intention is for that work to be led by the place-based advisor. Um, are you confident that there is the <coughs> capacity to do that? Um, I think we're at, we were, what we were referencing is a lot of the research background, the options would be led out by that person, but this is going to take some cross-council work and work with our partners. So I would see that more as a, a community development-led approach from our department. Great. That's good. Thank you. Councillor O'Malley. Just a quick um, question around um, point five about developing definitions of these groups. Yes. When, um, when will we be looking at that definition, I guess? Um. Uh, we have done some work on a draft uh, cr criteria if there was to be a grant, you know, a, in terms of a grants process. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that would be coming with. Sorry, I'm just trying to think about that. Um, I, I had had a discussion about whether that should be given to the Grants Subcommittee as a draft to have a look at first um, in terms of the definition and what a grants process might be. So I just need some more advice from our um, Governance General Manager around that. Okay, because it will be looking, there'll be obviously, because it's place-based, there'll be a geographical reference and then yes. is there an assumption that there'll be they won't necessarily have to be representative of the whole community, but there'll be a certain uh, size group that'll have to be representative of In that general, and there are a few definitions, but no internationally recognised uh, definition of place base, which makes it slightly complicated. But in general, the definitions do relate to taking a whole of community approach within a geographical area. So there will be a relationship to whole of community? Yeah, rather than, you know, where the. Uh, North East Valley Soccer Mothers Club or something. That was probably not a good <laughs> example. It was just one that leapt into my head. Um, yes, it, it would have to take a wider approach. And some communities are actually <coughs> using very specific <coughs> geographical measures. So it's, you know, a thousand homes within a set criteria. We, we, I don't think we want to be that specific, but we are looking at what what could be the options in terms of a definition. Okay, great, thank you. Further questions? No, uh, there being none, would someone like to move that the report be noted? Moved, Councillor Lofis or seconded, Councillor Elder. Is there any discussion? Councillor Van der Vis. Um, limiting myself to just a very high level comment on this 85 page uh, confidential report I found that in all the years that I've been here, this Councillor Van der Vis, um, the, I would refer you didn't refer to or discuss um, the papers that were circulated in non-public. You can refer and discuss um, the covering report, which is what we've been discussing up until this point. My high-level comment was that it was very long, extremely repetitive and exceedingly hard to read and led nowhere. I'm wondering if it's possible in future for us to get a summary in the bit that we are allowed to talk about and a summary that actually leads to some conclusion or some point. Any further comments? Discussion? Um, I just want to comment um, that I think this is really helpful. This is no easy task uh, ahead of us if we're to choose to 
um, go down um, what will hopefully be an, an enduring model of delivering uh, community development um, and a model that is designed with um, our community or ideally led by, uh, by our community. So um, it's just a, a note for um, councillors really that to do that properly will require uh, resourcing uh, in the next couple of years if we had to get to a point where by the next long-term plan, as was the intention um, following the debate in December, um, that we can have uh, alternative models uh, to look at that uh, that's something that's work that will need to be prioritised over the next uh, couple of years to get us into a point where we have robust discussion, uh, robust options to be able to discuss um, at the next 10-year uh, plan, my apologies, uh, the next 10-year plan process. Um, no, nothing further. Uh, I'll put it all those in favour. Right. Those against? No. Recorded, please. Item 9. Items for consideration by the chair, and we've got uh, I've got a note around following up around smoke-free social housing. Uh, anything else that people want to flag? No, there being none, I'll declare. On that matter, also the question uh, about whether we can put up signage without a statutory um, reason therefore. Thank you. Always heartening to hear an argument in defence of signage. Uh, that, being, that being said, this is, that brings the meeting to a close. We'll break for five minutes and be back with the Planning and Environment Committee. Thank you.